well, since 2017, thousands of Tanzanian pregnant students and adolescent mothers have been barred from attending school. I mean, just a situation that is very clear of one being denied access to education. And to discuss this matter further, we have Audrey Wabwire, who is the media manager with the Human Rights Watch covering Eastern Africa, where she handles communications and, of course, also writes about all matters human rights. Audrey, such a sad situation there in Tanzania. What would you say about this? Indeed, thanks so much, Leah, for having me. And uh, as you've mentioned, Tanzania uh, systematically excludes girls from education by implementing policies that punish pregnant teens and adolescent mothers. From Human Rights Watch research, many of the girls we spoke to said that they were subjected to very invasive pregnancy tests in school. And when they were found to be pregnant, they were expelled. They were embarrassed and asked to name who impregnated them and they were treated very harshly. And then um, they were told that if they come back to school, um, they might be a bad influence on other children. So they are kept away. And home is also not a friendly place for many of these children. And many of them don't return to school. So you can see they're really caught between uh, a rock and a hard place. And they're also denied their future. Um, maybe I can speak also to um, just pregnancy and what a difficult time it is. And then compounding that, looking at a child's growing body, they just face extra health risks, uh, extra mental health risks, um, just by the pregnancy itself. And then having all these things on top of it, it's truly a terrible situation. Audrey, you mentioned that some of the teenage girls are forced to undergo uh, testing that perhaps they're not even, you know, in agreement to go through, but then they have to go through those uh, pregnancy tests. I mean, when you look at this, would you say this is a violation of the rights of these girls? Of course, it's a violation because many of them do not want to go, uh, do not want to have this test. They feel very humiliated by how they are done. Um, sometimes the tests are done when they come back from their holidays. And so many girls are afraid to go back to school because they do not want to undergo these tests. And they just stay away from school because they, they don't want to go through this. And the ones who are tested feel very, very embarrassed because of how their bodies are being touched. So of course, it's a violation of their rights um, because this is not consensual at all. Um, and just the treatment that comes after this is also very humiliating, um, being talked about in assembly, um, being uh, asked to name who impregnated you, being asked about very private details that sometimes might be very painful. It's really difficult for a student who just wants to complete her education to be forced now to have to go through all this um, for something that uh, just because of a pregnancy. You know, Audrey, one would wonder, I mean, where do these officials get the authority to take girls through such kind of treatment or, you know, such kind of processes towards even getting uh, a pregnancy test? I mean, is it even legal to do that? Well, Tanzanian leaders have many times publicly expressed, um, let me say, disgust. They have blamed pregnancies on these children. They have um, said many times that pregnant children do not belong in schools. So um, the, 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 the most logical thing, what, what follows, of course, is that teachers and school officials then act on these uh, policies or on these announcements. And therefore, they go ahead to test the girls and ask them to leave school because if it's coming from a public authority then the schools and the teachers feel like they uh, this is something they're supposed to do and they're actually doing something that the leaders require them to do audrey when you talk about leaders who are we talking about the leaders you're saying are uh, the ones behind the push for teenage girls being forced to go through uh, pregnancy tests and being banned from school if they are found to be pregnant. Who are these leaders who are backing such decisions in Tanzania? 
We have seen announcements um, and, and, and declarations from the late uh, former president, John Pombe Magufuli, who many times um, spoke very harshly about teen pregnancies and um, declared that the school was not a space for pregnant children. Now, of course, coming from the president, many other leaders in the ministry and even in the region take their cue from the president and then go ahead to say the same thing. And of course, now this forces or this makes the schools and teachers feel like they have the authority and that they're doing the right thing when they put girls through this and deny them their education. You say that the Human Rights Watch has interviewed um, numerous girls just to find out the, the situation on the ground. I mean, if you can just give us one account that really, really touched your heart, that you would say this is a cause for alarm and a cause for reason for the international community to intervene in this matter. What will be that particular story? Um, it's hard to give just one story because we had several horrific accounts from many girls. We spoke to girls who are um, from 16 years, old, 16 years old and up to women who are 24 years old who had been forced to leave school when they were teenagers. And um, many times um, we found that sometimes the conditions they were living in anyway was making education not accessible to them. Um, schools are far away and children would, uh, girls would be asked by border border riders to, you know, take a ride. And then in the end, they have to pay for it in kind. Um, when they were just trying to get to school, some of them, you know, they're coming from really poor backgrounds and they want um, sanitary towels, which they don't readily have access to. And so they, um, get this from other people and they're forced to pay for it again through sex. Um, sometimes girls are abused by teachers, uh, relatives, parents, neighbors, people close to them in their community. And they don't really have a safe space where they can go and discuss these things just because sex is such a taboo. Um, so they don't really know how they can go and you know report this or explain that you know they were not even in a consensual relationship and even when they're in a consensual relationship they don't have a free space in school or at home where they can talk about about um, the challenges they're facing it was just a whole lack of information which causes all these counts that really stood out for me was um this girl who told us that um, when she was pregnant, when the school found out that she was pregnant, she was asked many, many times in the presence of other people to name who impregnated her. And a letter was written, a letter that was published to the police and other people um, talking about her story. And these are very personal details. And for a child to have to go through such um, a difficult circumstance. Of course, it affects them in, in, in really horrible ways. And also consider on top of that, they are pregnant and they'll have to bear a pregnancy and possibly bringing a child into the world. So it, it's just so many stories that are heartbreaking and difficult and finding that there is no support offered for these girls and they are denied their education. Audrey, such a sad account there. I mean, girls being forced to go through, you know, procedures that make them feel a bit like, you know, they're not human enough. Perhaps, you know, they're so intrusive uh, that the girls end up feeling some bit of shame. And like you've mentioned, this is a sense of exclusion from the normal, you know, happenings of the community because they're made to feel like they're different from other people. I mean, I would like to understand um, when we look at all those cases, what do the statistics look like as far as the, the girls, the teenage girls who have been affected in Tanzania as, as regards the ban uh, from education since now perhaps they are declared to be pregnant? Um, this is a very interesting question because according to the law in Tanzania, schools are supposed to report um, the pregnancies and um, marriages of, of students, which is illegal, but schools are supposed to provide this data. Now, there are very many challenges. We found that, you know, this data is not usually consistent. 
And then even when schools are you know, trying to test students, there's this whole invasion of privacy and, and it's being done in a really inhumane way. Um, and this is a responsibility for the government to provide statistics as, as a nation, but this is not being properly done. But the studies and the, the, organiz the other organizations that are doing research into this, and they're quoting hundreds of thousands of girls who are dropping out or becoming pregnant in schools. And so these are figures that we can't really ignore. Um, even from the, the, the interviews that human rights conducted from the girls, this is really um, um, evidence that um, even as other organizations have talked about, the problem is very widespread and there needs to be official data, like a, a better, a more concerted effort by the government to collect these statistics in a very humane way that protects the girls, that um, can inform policy and can inform many ways in which um, the government and the country can come together to make sure that these girls, this data is being used to actually protect their education and protect their health and, and actual well-being in general. Audrey, um, further to the statistics, so I do know that um, the Human Rights Watch did uh, organize perhaps, you know, uh, an interview with 30 girls and uh, most of them were aged between 16 and 24 years. Um, what's the status of most of these girls that you interviewed in August as far as education is concerned? Yeah, I, I can talk about the education, but we, we can't look at the education um, in a vacuum because with limited resources, it's unlikely that the girls who become mothers or the ones who become pregnant can even provide proper health care for the children um, they have because this usually happens in communities that are really poor, that are really struggling anyway. Um, and so for, for a few poor community, um, for a girl to then have a child at home where there were already limited resources, this becomes really, really difficult providing the basic needs for the girl, plus now the extra, plus now the child who has come into the family. And this really creates a cycle of poverty and inequality because if it was in a situation or in situations where there are abundant resources or, or a few resources, then the girl can, you know, easily feed the child, provide health care. But it's mostly poor communities that are impacted and they're impacted in really negative ways. They're in difficult situations where they have to find ways and um, difficult means to now provide for the, their children and even to be taken care of in, when they're pregnant. Well, let's talk about the modern contraception. Um, some of the statistics that the Human Rights Watch um, released also included data compiled by the uh, Gatmasher Institute uh, talking about sexual and reproductive organization. Uh, 360,000 girls and young women aged between 15 and, 20, and 19 years give birth each year. And we also do know, according to these statistics, 57% of the girls in this age group have an unmet need for or are not using modern contraception. How bad is the situation as far as the use of modern contraception is concerned? Um, when you look at the high number of pregnancies and adolescent mothers, this shows that the problem is widespread and it has become a really complex problem. And what one of the recommendations that we are making is the need for comprehensive sexuality education through the schools in Tanzania. Um, comprehensive sexuality education can provide children with the information that they need to understand their bodies and be aware about important issues such as consent, abuse, and how to prevent pregnancy and disease. Um, we, we often get, um, the, there's usually an argument that this information will make children more sexually active or, you know, abuse contraception or develop poor behavior. Um, this is not based on facts. We cannot continue burying our heads in the sand and pretend that children are not having sex. 
the data that we are seeing, the hundreds of thousands of pregnancy cases and child marriage and adolescent mothers, um, this is a clear indication that, you know, children are having sex or they're being abused. And because of that gap in information, children now are getting information. And we know that more and more in, in, in this age that we're living in, um, information is more widely accessible than it was let's say 10, 20 years ago. So children are finding information from the internet, from the media, from their friends, and from other sources that maybe are not so trustworthy. Um, and so it, it, it puts a child in a situation where they're making decisions that are not empowered with information. According to the Center for Reproductive Rights, uh, which is a global women's rights organization between 2003 and 2011, over 55,000 adolescent girls were forced to drop out or were expelled due to pregnancy. I mean, when you look at the future of most of these girls who have been banned from accessing education or going to school in Tanzania, I mean, what would you say about their future? Do they even have a future as far as education is concerned? If we're taking it from the point when the girl is found to be pregnant or when she discovers that she's pregnant, um, this child is now forced to get out of school, therefore she will go home or she will get married or she will have to now start her life, um, maybe raising a child um, with limited resources, of course. This is someone who was in school maybe nine months ago and now she has to find a way to feed this child. So it's a very difficult circumstance and also thinking about her desire to be educated to be educated of course she's very frustrated she's very depressed that you know her dream has just been snatched away from her like that but at the same time this child is here that needs her or she's now in a marriage and has to contend with this whole new circumstance um with, with limited resources in, in very poor conditions this is a, a really difficult environment for many of the girls we spoke to um even the women who are now in the early 20s thinking about you know how their life changed when they became pregnant yeah africa has a development goals that it wants to meet by 2063 and one of these goals is to have an educated population but um, this goal cannot be met if such a large number of people, of children, are already being denied access to education because they're pregnant or are teenage numbers. So this is a problem that should be dealt with also on a continental basis and even down to the country level like um, Tanzania with its policies and um, political will just to ensure that children can go to school and access education. Audrey, the current Tanzanian president, Samia Suluhu, has come under fire just in relation to the whole issue of teenage girls uh, being barred from school because of uh, getting pregnant. I mean, she's a lady. What do you make of this? Perhaps, you know, the idea would be that she would be protecting the rights of the girls and the women in her country, but perhaps for some, that does not appear to be the case. Well, you know, what's most important is the kind of policy that a leader um, implements or brings forward. So even though she has spoken publicly that she does care for the rights of women, um, what really matters to the girls is what happens to them on the ground. So even if, uh, you know, there's this uh, lofty aspirations, what matters is how are the girls being affected? Can they go to school? Can they um, continue accessing education? Um, so if the policies are made to ensure that girls are going to school, then we will come back and say that, you know, gender rights are indeed being looked into. But if they're not, then we cannot um, count in and say that, you know, because we have this president, then it automatically means that, um, girls' rights to education are being met. Having done extensive research on this issue of teenage pregnancy and, and girls who are teenage pregnant, uh, teenage pregnant girls being barred from school, I mean, looking at the situation as it is, because you've mentioned there's an issue of policies, 
Uh, what policies would you say Tanzania has at, at this moment that can adequately protect the girls? And if there are no policies, then, you know, what does that mean for the country? Yes, yeah, so something um, interesting and worrying is that even with this discriminatory policies that we're talking about today, the World Bank granted Tanzania $500 million uh, a loan so that Tanzania can improve its education. And part of this loan, um, $180 million, was specifically to make schools safe for girls um, and also to develop uh, what they're calling alternative education pathways. So far um, in this project, there are only 54 centers um, that are these alternative pathways. Um, obviously, these are just too few for a country like Tanzania. Um, we cannot honestly say that the girls are accessing education because of 54 centers. And um, while still pregnant teens are are supposed to access education um but it, it, it it's a big barrier that these centers are not free they need to pay for them and we've discussed at length that um they're already living um in with limited resources so expecting that they're going to pay for education to access um, a program that uh, they're now being charged for is just not a reality. Um, so when we're talking about policy, policies have to look at um, the situation, the circumstances of these girls, the funds that have been made uh, available by um, a, a, a huge international body like the World Bank that you know ha has provided funds so that the country can invest in education, then how is this education being actually made um, accessible? The girls need education that is not discriminatory. They need um, free education, just like any other children. And they should not be subjected to parallel education, um, which indeed is discriminatory in itself. So the change in policy that we're asking for is free education and um, education that's not discriminatory, just like any other children. And Audrey, even as we talk about the alternative education pathways, the AEP, um, I like that you mentioned it almost appears to be discriminatory. What do you think this does to the girls and even uh, mothers who are forced to go through this channel um, uh, called the alternative education pathway to be able to continue with their education? Um, if, if we're looking at what this girl, when a girl has gone through from the time, you know, she was subjected to the very invasive pregnancy test to being embarrassed and shamed publicly by teachers and other people in the community to having to carry a pregnancy that is really challenging for her health in circumstances where she is being blamed for the pregnancy and um, managing to you know, have the child and trying to go back to school, but not having the support from the government. Um, this makes it really hard for a girl to continue with her education because she just does not have the funds. Um, she does not have the support from the uh, her family, which you know is, is, is already struggling. And so, um, we have to see this individual, even as we're talking about these huge uh, statistics, we have to see these, indivi these as individuals, as children who are really, really struggling. And it, education is just being pushed further and further away from them. Um, a, a, a huge international body is claiming to um, have provided funds to support the education, but education is still not accessible. So uh, the fact of the matter is that the girls still cannot go to school. So any programs that are intended to support girls' education need to have a human rights angle, need to be um, very clear in ensuring that they are free and accessible for these girls who are in very difficult circumstances. That way, then we can all come back and say that, you know, girls can come back to school 
after they have their children or stay in school and you know in an environment where they're protected and included in education those kind of policies are the ones that will keep girls in school and ensure that we are not leaving such a high number of children out of education, but claiming as a continent to be looking forward to have a population that will be educated in 2063. Audrey, I will read to you something, uh, just a quote from the late president, Tanzanian president, John Magufuli, uh, during the time when he endorsed the expulsion policy on June 22nd in 2017. Uh, he was quoted saying, as long as I'm president, no pregnant students will be allowed to return to school. Their warranty to go to school, be it secondary or primary, is forbidden. I mean, listening to such comments from a prominent leader, and in this case, the Tanzanian president at that time, um, what does that tell you about the handling of, of the rights of women and the rights of girls in Tanzania? Yes, um, of course, listening to those very harsh words um, shows that this was something that was coming from the top and how it manifests in the school level is just really abusive practices against girls who now have to deal with the consequences of such an utterance from a leader. Um, Therefore, as a school feels like it's very justified or teachers feel like they're very justified to come out and press girls' bodies and, you know, not give them space to talk about the abuses that they're facing. Some of the girls have been sexually abused, but now they can't talk about it because, you know, the, it's a whole president who came forward and, you know, endorsed an expulsion ban. So there's just no space for girls, um, pregnant teens and adolescent moms, and even young women who, you know, who are forced to leave school because they were pregnant. Um, it, it just shows the kind of difficult environment that girls and women have been put in and how the country, how the leadership is actively, is still actively keeping them out of education, which is the right of every child in Tanzania. There's something you mentioned earlier, Audrey. Um, some of these girls are exploited by, so to speak, border border operators. Um, some of them are exploited by men who have money and they see, you know, an opportunity to to use these girls sexually. I mean, given this uh, accounts of girls who have been exploited, why do you think the government of Tanzania has not paid attention to this matter and in a way that also protects the rights of these girls and also makes them feel like they have, like what you mentioned, safe spaces in school? Yes, um, to, to address some of these issues, um, there has to be an environment where children can speak up and feel safe when they speak up about some of these experiences that they're having. There needs to be a safe space for a child to come forward and say that, you know, I have been given a ride by this border border and now I feel like he's forcing me to do something that I'm not comfortable with. There has to be a safe space in the home for children to come and ask questions about their bodies, about um, experiences they're having, about their discomfort with the way some people are treating them. Um, but because sex is deemed as a taboo, and the leadership of the country is coming forward and saying that, you know, this is actually the fault of children, then it is the problem is just thrown on the children who are actually innocent in this in this case because they have not been empowered with information and they've not been provided with uh, safe spaces where um, they are taught about, you know, what uh, sexuality means and what their rights are and where they can go for help. Um, so um, to answer your question, it's just that um, it, it, with the gaps that are there in information specifically, then it becomes really difficult to, to get information first from children um, who, who might not feel safe to come forward and say that they're uncomfortable or they're facing challenges or they, 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 they don't know what's happening. So it, it, it really boils down to, um, um, throwing such a huge complex problem on the children which is unfair and which is not right at all 
And Audrey, even as we talk about the unfairness in how the teenage girls are handled when they get pregnant, or mothers are handled who want actually to enroll in education, we've established, like you mentioned, even the alternative education that is available to teenage girls who are found to be pregnant and mothers is almost appearing discriminatory. Um, talk about also the whole issue of being exploited by men who perhaps take advantage because they have financial muscle, so to speak. I mean, do you feel perhaps the teenage girl who's found pregnant is in Tanzania and even the mother who has a child to take care of, perhaps they're being made to pay for their sins, so to speak, because it, it seems as though their rights are not fully considered in this case. Yes, um, what, what you're saying is absolutely correct. Um, the measures that are taken against the girls are, are punitive. Um, if, if a girl, uh, the schools are few and, and far between. And, and you see that children are still trying to get to school, walking far distances. So of, of course, a, a ride to school, you know, would be something attractive. Like everyone wants to, you know, have a, a, an easy time to be able to go to school. And um, when a child is now being forced to, to, to pay for this ride or is, is being forced to pay in kind for, you know, getting some money to buy pads, which is a need that, you know, they, they just need pads. You can't say that it's, you know, something she just wanted for fun. Um, you are really taking out, um, you are really uh, trying to simplify a very complex problem and blame it on these girls and uh, blame them for, you know, not having good morals. When indeed the, the system is the one that's failing them, there should be schools that are accessible to children um, across the country. There should be sanitary uh, towels and, and other materials that are accessible to children. And the children also should feel safe, should feel free to come to school and talk about the abuses that they're facing. So when you block all these resources from children and come back and then blame them when, 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 when these terrible things happen, I mean, that just shows that there is no interest or political will to actually protect children. And even as we come to an end of this conversation, Audrey, um, there has been a concern where the expulsion policy that was introduced by the late President John Makufuli, I mean, there has been a feeling that this policy was not adequately interpreted to most of the schools or the, the, the administration of most of the schools in Tanzania. Would you say this is the case? Yes, um, looking at our research and what the girls are telling us, um, have told us over the years um, conducting this research, um, it, it is a direct link from what the president, the former president, the least president said, and what they are now facing in school. Um, from, from the president endorsing the expulsion ban to the teachers who are testing the girls, and you know asking them to get out of school and keeping them away from class and you know telling them that they will I, I don't know influence the other students you can draw a direct link from the leader coming down to a, a small school in a village where the school feels that now it has to implement something that um the president said um so for, for this reason you you, you can easily it it, it it's, it's a direct issue that you can see that um, the country is now um, implementing something very negative on the girls because, you know, um, the leadership endorses it. So even though the children are suffering, um, the leadership has not come out clearly to condemn the expulsion and now come down to the teachers and explain that no now we want children to come to school whether they're pregnant whether they're adolescent mothers and we we need them to be able to access education we need them to access education for free and not face all these barriers um so unless the government uh we're really calling on the government to come out publicly and um uh, ensure that 
the girls, the teens, uh, the pregnant teens and adolescent mothers can come back to school and can stay in school. Um, and also we, we're calling on the African Union and the international development partners like the World Bank to support and to urge Tanzania to make sure that there are structures in place to support children, to support uh, pregnant teens and adolescent mothers and ensure that they can access education and they can stay in school and um, they don't have to pay extra fees um, um, because they, they got pregnant. And, and to ensure that the country has um, provides children with the information that they need um, so that they can uh, report abuse, but also so that they can just understand themselves and be able to um, prevent some of the problems that um, they have to face when they engage in sex without um, the proper guidance from you know, leaders in their communities. Audrey, uh, as we come to a close, the Human Rights Watch recently called on President Samir Suluhu to enact a decree to effectively end the expulsion of pregnant students. Also, you made an order uh, that perhaps, you know, not, not you made an order, but you asked uh, and requested the president to make an order for government officials to end punitive and discriminatory practices against girls. I mean, what is the Human Rights Watch doing towards ensuring that the president, uh, you know, honors the call from the Human Rights Watch? Yes, what's very important to Human Rights Watch is, is to have um, open dialogue with the, 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 the leaders of Tanzania to you know, discuss our findings more and uh, present our uh, recommendations more. Um, because this is, a, this is a problem that you know, we're trying to solve um, along with the leadership, along with the community. And um, it is through advocacy with Tanzania and, and development partners that we feel that, you know, there can be solutions found for these children. So the, this is an ongoing conversation that, um, you know, hoping that um, um, the government is, is receptive and would like to continue discussing and, and, and trying to understand this problem from different angles then you know we continue with our advocacy and, and research and speaking with more people who either are going through the problem or are trying to solve the problem or are interested in you know um, providing tanzania with the necessary support in order to combat this very very important problem that um denying children from accessing education and therefore living up to their their full potential later on Fantastic. Thank you so much, Audrey Wapuire, for making time for us. And we do hope to see change in Tanzania as far as teenage pregnant girls being able to access education. Thank you for shedding light on this matter. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, again, that has been Audrey Wapuire, who is a media manager with the Human Rights Watch covering Eastern Africa, where she handles uh, communications and, of course, also writes a lot about and extensively, uh, by the way, about matters, human rights. Again, that was a conversation about the teenage pregnancy case and issue, so to speak, in Tanzania. Thank you for watching. My name is Leangare. Mm -hmm.